What does a 20 or a $10 microphone sound like? Welcome back to The Mix, I'm ABD. You may have heard of the website Timu or Temu. They have been uh, advertising on different parts of the internet as of late. And uh, what they basically are is just a new AliExpress. If you're familiar with AliExpress, it is uh, Chinese goods usually, or goods that are made in China for very cheap and then sold on the internet for very cheap. Some people like to uh, drop ship them and then sell them for more money, different products in the US like on Amazon and stuff like that. But Timu, or Temu has been uh, advertising, at least to me, about microphones. I saw ads on Twitter and other places, uh, get an order, buy some stuff, get a free microphone. And so what I did is I signed up and I got a microphone and some headphones, some fake knockoff Apple wireless headphones and then a fake U87 microphone that we're going to try out and test today. And then we'll review those things and we'll tell you if uh, a very cheap fake knockoff microphone is worth checking out or not, and I'm guessing that it's kind of going to be a piece of crap. If it's anything more than a piece of crap, I will be impressed. So let's open up this monstrosity of tape and plastic and uh, get to it. All right, and so here we have our microphone. In this box, it says professional condenser microphone, internet karaoke, PC recording, instrument recording. And uh, we do not have a brand name. But um, when I was getting it, it was King Lucky on the website. It said King Lucky. And uh, if we open this box, it is beat up. It does come with an XLR cable, which I don't think I'm going to use. I am scared to use that. But it does come with an XLR cable. There are cheaper versions of the same microphone. I think it's the same microphone. And it comes with a female XLR to uh, TRS cable, which is real cheap. This comes with a full XLR. And then you have... Uh, some paperwork that's been beat up. Everything's kind of beat up a little bit. We have a shock mount inside here, which is definitely plastic because it is very, very lightweight. Yeah, yeah it feels very, very cheap. There's like a foam kind of pad there. I mean, it looks like it'll work. It looks like it'll do what it says that it uh, does, but it is very cheap. Does it actually, I mean, it actually functions like a and then the microphone. It's actually heavier than I thought it would be. There it is. Fake U87. It kind of looks like a U87. Uh, it does look cheap. It has the, like, fake nickel. The, um, the capsule feels like it might rattle a little bit inside. Maybe not. Um, this grill is actually not too cheap. I can't really make a dent in it if I press on it. It has just like a painted or sticker there of a cardioid, cardioid pattern, polar pattern, where on a real U87 you can uh, change that. And then it says down here, microphone, U87 microphone. And um, first impression is not too bad. Uh, I just realized my good mic stopped recording like halfway through that. Don't really know why, but we're going to plug in this mic and we're going to see how it sounds. And uh, so thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoy. We'll be back. Okay, so we have the microphone plugged in and I'm actually quite surprised by how good it sounds. Um, it's not really that harsh on the sibilances on the high end. The poppiness is not too bad. If I get closer, it's definitely worse. The uh, off-axis coloration, if I turn it one way, sounds like this. If I turn it completely away, sounds like that. There is a fair bit of handling noise, but the capsule inside does not really rattle like I thought it would. But again, handling noise if you're tapping on it. The grill, again, is, is pretty decent quality. It's not super uh, soft. And um, we could put a pop filter in front of it. We could put it on the shock mount and then we can maybe add some um, post-processing to it and then we'll try it with an acoustic, vocal, singing, and electric. But first impressions, pretty good. Better than I thought they would be. Why does it actually sound kind of okay? $10 microphone. All right, we'll be back. And if you look at the, um, one other thing is if you look at the waveform here, it's actually pretty healthy. We have the gain at about one o'clock and we're getting some nice peaks and detail in there. What do you think? Does the mic sound good? No processing on the mic whatsoever. 
Earlier in the video, before the mic stopped working, we had this mic on, two microphone, WA-47, and there was post-processing on it. Here, no post-processing. If I put post-processing on right now, here's what it sounds like. We have a DS a little bit, we have an EQ curve on it, and uh, some other fancy stuff that I might show on screen, but uh, that's good for now. Let's set it up with the shock mount and a pop filter, and then uh, give it a, a better demo. But uh, so far, kind of impressed. Kind of impressed with this mic. So thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more. So we can talk a little bit more about the mic. If you look on Timu, the manufacturer of the mic, I believe, is King Lucky Audio. And you can find the same mic on AliExpress. I looked, and it's the same mic. Different uh, sellers will sell it for different prices. Usually it goes for like 18 up to 30 35 something like that. And uh, it's always like marked down from 70 bucks or whatever. You're saving however much money. It was originally $70, but it's never actually $70. Um, it doesn't actually claim to be a large diaphragm microphone. If you look at certain listings, it'll tell you that the capsule is 16 millimeters, which is a medium-sized diaphragm microphone. It is not a large diaphragm, and it's not a small diaphragm. It's medium. 16 millimeters is right in the middle. If it's 12 or below, it would be small. And if it's 24.5 or 25.5 or above, then it's a large diaphragm. That's about an inch big. Um, sometimes you'll get confusing information about the capsule or the diaphragm size. The capsule is this piece here, but the diaphragm is the actual piece inside that you sing into, the heart of the microphone, the actual thing that picks up your voice or the instrument or whatever you're doing. It's easy to just unscrew it. You have a metal piece, you have a plastic little ring, or maybe it's metal too. And then the whole thing comes out like this, two pieces on the bottom, one here, one here. And then that ring, like I talked about, plastic ring I think, in between the two pieces. And then you have a circuit board which doesn't look too bad. It's pretty cheap and simple. The metal in here is really cheap. If it's even metal, it might be plastic. And uh, to look at the actual um, diaphragm itself, we would have to unscrew these here. So we'll do that just so we can look at it and then we'll put it back together. We'll put it on the shock mount and then we'll do a test um, or a demo with vocals and guitar and acoustic guitar and um, we'll compare it briefly to another microphone, and then we'll wrap it up. And then you take this off, and you have the diaphragm inside, which is gold-plated, and it's kind of sloppy. When you get in there, the soldering is okay. The actual gold plating, there's a couple dents and nicks and things on it. Um, but overall, the mic, how does it sound? We can plug it in, and then we can do some quick demos. Thank you for watching. Okay, we have the mic back together. It is a gold-plated XLR on the bottom, and um, the overall build quality, like we talked about, is good. There's no rattling in there, but there's also no shock mount inside for the capsule. It's just in there, solid state in there. And so if you're to tap it, or maybe the boom arm or whatever you're using it with, it will probably translate into sound in, in the mic. So finally, let's plug it back in and do those demos and give it an overall review. We have the shock mount here, upside down. Usually you would have it the other way if you want it right side up. And uh, you have it facing this way. And again, the build quality of the shock mount is uh, not terrible. It's a cheap light plastic, but it does what it is supposed to do. And it's nice and sturdy enough. And uh, it looks okay, at least from far away. So we just have to screw the mic in and then we will grab an acoustic guitar. Okay, so we have the fake U87 plugged in. The not large diaphragm condenser microphone, the medium diaphragm condenser microphone that we talked about just a second ago. We're going to compare it to a Warm Audio WA47, which is a true large diaphragm condenser microphone. It's also a tube microphone, and it's also one of the best microphones I've ever used. So it's not a super fair comparison, but it'll show you just how good or bad this mic is. 
So we have it plugged into a universal audio, Volt 2, with a gain at about 1 o'clock. It'll be at about 1 o'clock for both mics. We'll sing, guitar, and then we'll use it as a room mic for electric guitar, and you can hear the comparisons. So first, we can do some vocals, some singing. Who knows how long I've loved you? Do you know I love you still? Will I wait a lonely lifetime? If you want me to, I will. Who knows how long I've loved you? Do you know I love you still? Will I wait a lonely lifetime? If you want me to, I will. Who knows how long I've loved you? Do you know I love you still? Will I wait a lonely lifetime? If you want me to, I will. Who knows how long I've loved you? Do you know I love you still? a lonely lifetime if you want me to i will so small or medium condenser microphones actually have a more natural sound to them and so they sound great on instruments like acoustic guitar piano and things like that so if we play the acoustic guitar a little closer to the mic here's what we get Okay, so we are back. What did you think of this microphone? What did you think about it in comparison to the large diaphragm and much more expensive and fancy microphone, the WA-47? I think it sounds pretty good, especially on acoustic guitar. On vocals, it's not terrible. Again, this microphone usually goes for 30 bucks, $20, $15 even. I got it for basically 10 with Timu with their new promotion. And overall, it's really not a bad sounding microphone. There's a little bit of maybe hiss in the high end. It's a little harsh and it's lacking maybe a little bit of definition in the low end. Um, but overall, for the money, you can't really complain. The build quality, again, is not too bad. One of the negatives, there's definitely handling noise because the diaphragm inside is not stabilized. It doesn't have a shock mount or anything like that, so it does move if you touch it. But overall, out of 10, I'd probably give it like a 7 or even an 8. Probably an 8, considering how cheap it is and how good it sounds. Again medium diaphragm microphone, so don't think you're getting a large diaphragm. There are replicas of this type of microphone that do have a actual large diaphragm inside the microphone. And I'm thinking about getting one of those to review for the channel as well. But um, I am happy that I tried getting this. I'm actually happy to have it in the studio because I don't have a medium diaphragm condenser microphone. I don't even have a small diaphragm condenser microphone at the time. I only have a large diaphragm, a large diaphragm tube, and now a medium diaphragm. So uh, it's good to have. I'm happy to use it. What did you think? Let me know in the comments below. Stay tuned for probably a follow-up of a similar microphone with a full one-inch diaphragm inside it. And until next time, sing into microphones because music is awesome. I appreciate you. Like and subscribe if you would like to. And take care. We can open these headphones, which are called P9 headphones, the box got a little beat up, a little damaged in shipping. Hey, um, the product seems okay.
it comes with a little piece of paper with some specifications on it. It comes with a cable. So they are, um, I thought they were wireless, and I think they are, but I think, I guess you can also use them wired. You pull them out, and they look like another product from Apple, but they are not that product. And the first thing that lets you know that they're not that product is the, um, well, they feel very cheap and the buttons are terrible, but these pads on an actual um, Apple headphone, it's like a knitted uh, material. It's a weaved kind of fabric. And here it's just like a, uh, it's a fake kind of cotton or uh, polyurethane cover that looks like a weave. And uh, so we'll, They don't feel terrible. It does a pretty good job actually blocking out the outside uh, sound. I feel like there's absolutely no padding though. Like these pads don't actually do anything. And after wearing them for a short time, I'm sure they wear down. Another thing up here, obviously on the Apple headphones, it's another type of weaved material. And here it's just a uh, piece of plastic. But from far away, I guess, from far away, you're rocking out, you're walking down the street. Does it look like they're real Apple headphones? You tell me. This is how I walk down the street. All right, so we'll try these. Yeah, they're pretty uncomfortable. And they're pretty ugly the more you look at them. Very cheap. $10, $10 is, that, is what I ended up paying. Um, usually this goes for 30 and this goes for like 18, but I got them together for about 20. So about 10 each. <laughs> 